All right, it is a beautiful, crisp fall day. We've got the leaves a changing. We've got a little pumpkin man, and we are going to be taking a road trip here in our Model Y up to Athletic Brewing in Connecticut. So we're going to get some awesome scenery on the way and should have a ton of fun up there with some non-alcoholic beer and beautiful fall vibes. So come along with us and let's drive. All right, off we go. We are going to Athletic Brewing, which you've probably seen from ads all over basically every social media uh, network. But um, we actually got introduced to it a few months ago. Uh, our friend was raving about it. We tried it out, became uh, members of their like monthly subscription thing, and have just been going like completely overboard on it. But just um, I, I personally really like it because uh, it gives us... Uh, an option to have something that tastes like beer when you kind of want one without uh, having the uh, downsides of um, the, the alcohol and everything. So uh, even for today, going to this Oktoberfest, being able to uh, try out a bunch of their different stuff, um, sit outside and enjoy all of that uh, without uh, having to worry about how we're going to feel for work tomorrow. Uh, it's really or nice. Driving. Or driving, yeah. The bands are going to sing there. Yes, and the bands are going to sing there, I'm sure. Um, so this should be really fun. Well, we've actually, like, driven sort of past or, like, you know, kind of passed on the highway, the brewery before, but... Um, this is their new brewery location oh, where it? they don't have a tap room, and the old location in Shotford, which is just down the street, mm -hmm. does have a tap room. Oh, okay. I didn't realize there was two things, because I've always looked on the maps, and... This new one. If you read the Google review, yeah. the thing on Google, it says we don't have a tap room here. Yeah. But if you go, right. try it. Well, that's why we didn't stop at all, because yeah. I thought there was no tap room. But interesting. Okay. Well, maybe, I don't know if we're going to go through Stratford, but we could check that out too. But yeah, it sounds like they just basically have this set up as like a temporary thing in, um, on their parking lot and patio. So we'll see what the setup is and everything is, but it should just be a nice, beautiful drive through... Uh, the fall foliage in Connecticut. Which exploded overnight up here. Yes, we're closing it. We're closing it. What'd you say? I said the fall foliage after like how much rain we got and how cold mm -hmm. it got should be popping. Should be popping. Pop, pop, yes, pop, 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 Alright, today we have got this uh, cool looking uh, console USB <laughs> power hub for the Tesla. Uh, this uh, from Vion, uh, some of my favorite partners to work with on the channel. So let's get this set up. I'll show you how it works. And uh, this is awesome because it provides lots of options and flexibility for power beyond uh, just using the uh, two USB-C ports that are in the uh, console here. So, uh, and the other cool thing is this will actually show how much power it's drawing, um, which will be interesting to see because I've always wondered how fast our stuff is actually charging in here. Yay. All right, this is pretty cool. First of all, I just, I really like the uh, little ports here. So you plug these into the uh, USB-C ports in the center console to get power, but they're like the same style uh, as the um, cool cords that we have from Vion, uh, which look just like the uh, Tesla wall connector. Um, and it's nice that these are at like a 90 degree angle, so uh, they uh, aren't going to get like bent and broken or anything, and they'll just fit uh, really nicely in there. Uh, nice short length, so um, they're not going to be like wasting space. And I like this little braided cable on here too. Feels nice and high quality and um, shouldn't break at all. So a couple of things to know about this. This is uh, compatible with the Model 3 and Y with the Refresh Center console, which is anyone from 2021 through present. Um, for the Model Y, that should be all of them. Uh, you just have to keep an eye out for any Model 3s that are from um, 2021 or earlier before they refresh the console. So basically, if you've got a console that looks like this, uh, not the wood, um, it slides open like this and has the uh, chargers like that, you should be all set. Uh, this also draws less than one watt of power, so uh, it's not going to be wasting any sort of like energy from the car or causing phantom drain or anything like that. Um, the LED light also is is super power efficient, so uh, very minimal power consumption, and the screen will actually turn off uh, automatically Mommy. after being parked for two minutes. Uh, so it's not going to be wasting power. All right, so this uh, 
this port, uh, the PD power one supports, uh, it's even labeled, supports up to 27 watts of output. Uh, so for any PD fast charging devices, uh, that'll be compatible with. And it's even got a light on here for lighting up the console. Uh, so you can see your stuff so that, that's in there. All right, so let's uh, plug this in and check it out. All right, so this basically just um, sits here kind of in like the slots uh, for the, um, that the door closes on. Okay, so this can just go right in here, and because of the way that this console door closes, it basically will just like seal up on there, and that looks super nice. Look even like better. That. Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't like totally go with the wood, but it actually kind of breaks it up a little bit, which is nice. Uh, and if you didn't have like this wood one on here, it would just perfectly match uh, the thing there. Will it charge faster than that? It will charge faster than that. Great question, dear. This only charges at, I think, 7.5 watts. So this says it can go up to 27. That's why you keep doing Yeah. So, okay, so the insulation, we just put that in there, and now we're going to plug in our two uh, little ports here. Oh, look at that. And nice little screen. And... Okay, so you can see we're using zero watts right now. So let's actually test out our uh, sweet charging cables here from, uh, also from Vion. And here, we'll even go with the fast one here. Okay, so zero watts still, good. And now let's see what we get on our uh, iPhone here, our lightning iPhone, because we're old. Oh, oh, there we go. All right, we're getting 15 watts. So Did you just throw that on the floor? That is charging twice as fast. Oh, now we're down to three watts. <laughs> maybe it's because my phone is charged and maybe uh, because I'm recording right now. But we'll see how that uh, holds up. And regardless, that's going to be faster than charging off of the wireless thing here. And it's not going to overheat my phone. So we've got that. Oh, 15 watts. All right. And uh, we can also plug in my GoPro and uh, other devices here. So nice to have these options for USB-C and USB-A charging. And like I said, there's even there's a button here. Hard to see in the daylight, but there's a, a little light here as well uh, to light up the console. So that is pretty sweet. So if you're interested in getting one, I will have the link in the description below. Uh, you can find this from Vion. Make sure to use my code to save uh, and pick up your own. And I would suggest you these awesome I cables as well with it. So th this no. uh, road trip, no. so what do we think? This might be, I, hope I don't know. This is the last one because I can't do another one with these <laughs> kids. So close yeah, in, the, in the Model Y, so our Rivian, uh, we've locked our configuration and everything. We have a guide assigned, but uh, they have not been like, they're responsive, but every single email takes like three, four days to get a response to. And they're not like fully answering my questions. So we've had to go back and forth. Uh, they also said that they'd be giving me, they put in a request for my shop access. Uh, and I haven't heard anything else about that. And we also asked for that six months ago when we test drove the car. Mm, so like three. We uh, did it in the, we did it in the no, with the Brooklyn thing. We, not Brooklyn, the, the Manhattan. You didn't uh, put access to the. You didn't ask for access to the store then. You asked for oh, access I, to the store after we did the test drive in oh, you're Brooklyn. Right. Oh, that's right. Okay, which Sorry, was, that was summer. Recent. Okay, fine, whatever. But that's still several months ago. But yes. It's not um, gonna be a white one. No, it's, no, gonna, it's gonna be, gonna be green. a green one. So, um, so I don't know. We could be like days away from our Rivian or two months or more still. So who knows? Um, but we're hoping it is very soon because we've got a pretty major road trip coming up, driving down to Asheville uh, in November. And I would like to check out the Rivian Adventure Network uh, chargers along the way because they put a ton on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Uh, that if we, would be really nice to drive along. If we don't get the Rivian, oh, though. Speaking of. Yeah. Which <laughs> is another reason why I want it. If yeah. we don't get the Rivian, though, yeah. um, I'm not going in this car to Asheville. We're taking the Buick. Okay, yeah. And I'm, I'm not doing it. Yeah. The, these, like, the, even this is a just under two hour drive, and it's a bit too long in, cramped into this Model Y. The kids are on top of each other. So they're so close to us. They're just yakking and screeching in our ears the whole time fighting with each other and poking each other so uh and here comes a rivian uh amazon, amazon van. van yeah that's the problem is uh we've been waiting so long now that rivians are way too popular um yeah so anyway we are uh, hopefully that we get that soon because we can't keep doing drives in this car they're getting too big for it too like yeah. they're too I'm, I'm getting closer and closer to really like 
I, I know we, we haven't even had this car two years, so it is not like time to move on from it yet uh, financially, but the trade-in values have actually started going back up. Uh, so I've got my eyes on that, and I don't know exactly what the threshold would be, but I'm kind of thinking like if this goes back around 45000 or so, um, that might be enough that, and it, like if we find something, a deal on something else, uh, I just, I feel like this is too small. Although, I mean, I guess we have to wait and see. Like, if we're just using the Rivian all the time, then this doesn't really matter and it doesn't make sense. About this. You don't need to change this. Once yeah. we have the Rivian, that becomes the go-to family car. Yeah, true. Which I the guess. Buick was when we had two gas yeah, cars. I guess you're right. I guess I'm not thinking about it right. Um, but anyway, but, but like driving driving the, the BMW iX uh, in France, like, really kind of <laughs> set me off. And like, I really want that. Uh, okay. Oh, and wait a few years. I want the, the pol that little Polestar mid-size SUV that they're, they've got. That one? Oh, that's, it's, it's small, though. It's like this car. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need two SUVs. I guess, I guess when this car is really just driving to the train station, it doesn't make, make a big difference. But you just like you just want to never basically be able to take this car in, or take the, my car on weekends? We can when it's, if it's short. So stuff like because they drop everything. But yeah, I guess I guess you're right though. Like we will just take the Rivian ever. I mean, we're gonna put so many miles on that car, but whatever. Um, and then we'll just take this one, in like a few minutes, if we're going to the zoo or around town or something. Exactly. Um, once he's out of that seat though, and like in a booster, then because they'll be, be out of because then they'll be yeah. out of their booster. So it's just when you have just the one booster in there, then there's a lot more than the twins can sit next to each other. But that's not really a good idea either because they'll be too close. But yeah. Still, yeah. The but even even driving that Model X, like I wasn't all that serious about it, and I just went to drive it to to go drive it and to do the video and stuff. But um, like kind of being in there, especially the six seat one, I'm like, this is really nice, and uh, like I, I, it'd be nice to have that much space and stuff, even even though it's not like huge uh, over this. Uh, but it just it doesn't make any sense to basically buy, I mean, even with the prices decreased on that, so that that car is basically, a Model X is like 80000 now, um, it just, it doesn't make sense to to do that. I put in for, uh, to have Tesla like price the trade-in on this, and I think they said like 40000 basically, um, which isn't bad, but still, I mean, it doesn't make any sense to basically spend another, you know, delta of $40,000 for a slightly bigger car. Um, no. Also, I like. I just. I don't want another Tesla at this point. Yeah. Um, so that's gonna be a. It's gonna be a no. No uh, dog. But let's see. Um, let's just get the Rivian because I think you'll be surprised as to how much we like. We won't want to spend in this. Yeah. Well, let's see if we actually ever get that. Yeah. Rivian, if you're listening. I heard it. I've, I've, trust me, I've tried to find. Well, yesterday there uh, we went to a concert and um, there was a R1S with. It was either dealer or manufacturer plates from Illinois, which is where Rivian's based. Um, I uh, drive in there too, and I was really hoping they'd like park near us. So I could go talk to them and ask <laughs> if they work there and if they can get us higher on the list or something. But I guess for better or worse, it doesn't seem like they actually do that. So that's a good thing because it's fair, but it doesn't help our specific situation. But yeah, if anyone from Rivian is listening, come on, man, we are ready. Yeah. We haven't really talked about that. Would like would we actually? So let's say, say the flight is reasonable. We would fly to Chicago. Um, you know, say it's under two hundred or even three hundred. I guess. Uh, would we both go and like? So the the challenge is the Rivian factory is like it. I think it's an hour and forty five minutes from Chicago. So you either we'd if if only I went, I would have to like Uber there. Um, because then I'd have you know be picking up the car, or we'd both have to go do a rental car, and uh, drive down, then like split up and just drop the rental car back off, and then do the drive back here. Would we realistically do that? No. Okay. No, if it's just for a factory tour, like yeah, yeah. could figure it out at some point. We can go to Chicago on a family vacation and mm. go do a factory. Like you know, guess. it's not. Yeah, but then the road trip back would be fun. It's not. Do you, I remember that drive back. It was horrible. <laughs> Air through Ohio, yeah, through oh Indiana, yeah. through Indi Pennsylvania. Indiana was lane, all the traffic. And it was a two lane, only a two lane highway the yeah. whole way. Yeah. Absolutely not. Oh my God. Western Pennsylvania is so boring. No. Yeah. All right. Well, 
There's that. Decision. Cool. <laughs> okay. Guess we're not doing that now. Do you remember the, uh, our drive through? I think it was through Indiana. Mm -hmm. It was two lane highway, and the one lane was closed with Almost zero the construction the yeah. whole way. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll see. Maybe I'll still go do the, uh, the factory pickup. Yeah. Well, what I want to know, and the question I have outstanding to Rivian right now that I haven't gotten any answer on, and that they're not going to answer. delivery location, and who knows what that does Well, yeah, if they change it to the factory thing, then exactly. I don't want it to push us back in any way. I would hope okay. it would actually mean you get the car earlier because they don't have to transport it, but uh, I'm sure they won't actually like give me a direct answer. answer because they don't, they can't like commit on that kind of thing. But we'll see. I've also heard that apparently that, like email isn't really a good way to communicate with the guides. They have like a text system. So if I don't hear by tomorrow, uh, I'll probably do that. Um, all these Rivians that we're seeing around us, do we really think all these people put in orders before us? Like, do you think people are that, unless, 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 here's my theory, maybe they did. Maybe they were looking for an electric vehicle that was an SUV, it, that it wasn't was a Model outfit. X, yeah. and it's truly the first mm -hmm. full, so like, yeah. suburban-sized mm -hmm. SUV. Yeah. So maybe all these people did. Could be. I mean, they are all still like launch editions that I'm seeing coming out, which I think mean, well now, I don't know. I, I don't totally remember that. I guess we'll find out about that like when we're uh, actually getting ours. So like ours is technically not a launch edition. It's a adventure edition, which is almost exactly the same thing. It's just like, remember they were telling us when we did the demo drive, like it's, they upgraded the sound system and yeah. after the launch version. And uh, I don't remember, you said something else about something else in the interior was updated. Um, so it should be better, but, uh, I think he told us that we coming. weren't long. He yeah. looked at your reservation because we, because we, we ordered after, right after the price increase. <laughs> um, but still early enough that our pricing was locked in. So we knew it wouldn't change or anything. Um, and we also did it right before the tax, uh, incentive stuff changed. So we think we should be, yeah, we should be eligible for something right i don't know we think we will um so, uh, so anyway but all the ones i've seen on the road are still launch edition ones which i think means that they ordered before the prices changed but i i'm also kind of with you like really this many people like we're seeing i know nowhere else probably in the universe is seeing this many but in suburban wealthy uh northern new jersey here I, I see. I'm seeing two I see to three day. a day. Yeah, yep. At least one every day. Sometimes two or three. Yeah, and in the Amazon vans too. Like I know that's a different thing, but I see, I, I see one every single day. Sometimes like three, four of them. The well, I told you the Fairfield. What is yeah. it? Is it a distribution center there or mm -hmm. whatever is there? Yeah. The only trucks, the one time, <laughs> the only trucks that come out of there are Rivians. Mm -hmm. But um, and, and like I'm seeing. It was like for a while we were seeing a ton of R1Ts, which you can like you can just buy one now. There's no wait, um, and you can get them out of inventory and stuff too. But um, oh, actually, I, have a, I do have a theory. Um, the the but now it's like now I'm seeing way more R1Ss also. Uh, the other thing is apparently what happened is a ton of people uh, put the reservations in, bought it, and then immediately flipped it because you can make a profit. I think that's actually how we're seeing so many now, is people have bought them from resellers. You think? Yeah. yeah. There's no way that, like, some of the people that I'm seeing driving them, there's no way that, like, they got in, you know, on day one with these yeah, reservations and stuff. Um, so, actually, I think it's a ton of that, and it, it's disappointing. Like, they don't want that, and part of, part of the reason I thought we might be able to kind of get some leeway here and get our stuff ordered is, like, what they actually want to know is that you're a real buyer and that you like care about the brand and you're going to keep the car and like be a good ambassador and stuff for it. So I thought like you know to going to these events and being in touch with the guides and um, doing the demo drive and stuff would potentially help with that, but it doesn't seem like it's making any difference. Um, but it's just it's disappointing. Like the with the Hummers, they had a ton of that. Um, Tesla had a lot of it early on too. Um, I just like it's it's disappointing to me and I hate seeing that that like basically people are just out to make money off of it rather than caring at all about the brand or anything. So this drive is um, like kind of perfect distance wise. It's going to be like just at the, uh, no, actually it's like even shorter than the, we didn't even need to go to hundred percent. We could have just gone to 80. It looks like um, we're going to, it's about a uh, hundred mile, 110 miles each direction. 
So 220 total. Uh, this car is rated for 320, but you never actually get that. So uh, I think we'll probably use about 70% of, and we shouldn't have to supercharge at all. Yeah. We're right on projection. All right. Let's see as we go north if we get a little bit more foil edge. Foil R1S towing an uh, old boat. What's the end? I don't think it's actually towing. Can I go up? Where is it? Up there in that oh, parking lot. Oh, oh, no. oh, way too many Rivians. All right, we're about uh, just like an hour and 20 minutes or so into the drive, which is always the point at which everybody in the backseat starts getting punchy and handsy and whiny and bad. And today's drive is uh, no different than that. No, he's messing with the seats. Stop, Stop it. it. This exactly. This is why we are sick of driving in this car. But he would do that in the other car. Too. Yeah, probably. But at least he wouldn't be punching them and fighting with them the whole time. Um, but uh, this is now the third road trip in a row where I have decided not to use autopilot because it really seems to me like it has gotten worse and worse to the point that I just don't trust it anymore. Um, it started doing like this thing now where, yeah, like it it hugs the right side noticeably. Like we're, we're not in the center of the lane with it on. Um, and for me, like normally I would hug the left a little bit more um, or at least, you know, be squarely in the center, but it has got us like basically, yeah, it we're, always, like, it always we're right on the, the right, the right it, lane. Yeah. It, I think the sensor, well, first of all, it always tells you that your one sensor is blocked. No yes. matter how clean this car is or how dirty this car is, there's always one sensor blocked, which mm -hmm. leads me to believe that Daddy. they're not 
stops firing on all cylinders. Yeah. The second thing I notice is this car leans always when you have it on, mm -hmm. regardless of lane. One, one second, second, regardless of the lane, it always hugs to the right. And I don't know if it's programmed that way from like some sort of weird safety. Yeah perspective but and that's why i stopped using it though because every time we're going around a turn if i'm in the not you know not in the far right lane if there's a car on the right side of us yes. like this uh, the autopilot keeps you like inches away from them and it, it doesn't move over at all for um other cars and, and trucks are like, you gotta stop disengages just randomly yeah and um so like it, it just like it felt like we were gonna like brush against the side of them uh and then when like when it's on and you're turning if you like the amount of um pressure and torque you have to put into the wheel is like first of all it's yelling at me all the time to uh, touch the wheel um so like clearly i need to put more torque into it but then when you uh do that it disengages but then when you actually want to disengage it you have to like yank the wheel what i really don't get is when you put on a turn signal why does it not leave the um adaptive cruise control on but turn uh, the lane keeping part of autopilot off so that you don't have to like put this dangerous amount of uh, steering into the wheel to get it to uh, disengage oh and then like the when you when you change lanes it takes so long for it to uh, speed up like it, it's almost dangerous in this kind of traffic like it's it waits until you're a hundred percent clear of a car in the lane that you're coming out of and like keeps you basically at that speed, even though you're like in the overtaking lane now. Um, so that part is really bad. And then the other thing I was going to say, the uh, I'm going to have to turn off this thing with the um, automatic turn signal uh, turning off thing. It's a nice feature that they added, and um, generally I like it. And the idea of it is great, where it actually uses like the cameras and the vision system and stuff to uh, turn off the turn signal like once you have uh, uh, merged into another lane or completed your turn or whatever. But I've just found, like, it's gotten worse and worse and worse also. Now, like, it disengages way too aggressively before I'm, like, fully in another lane. Um, it never shuts off, like, when you're merging onto uh, a highway uh, or anything. Like, there's not clear lane markings. And, um, like, it just, it feels like the vast majority of the time I either have to put it back on because uh, it turned off way too fast. Or I have to, like, manually turn it back off again because it doesn't figure out to turn off. So I think I'm just going to go back to like the the three blinky uh, setting thing. Oh, look at so cute! Look at his hat. He said park anywhere. Yes. Spot. Want to go? We have the best spot. Yep, the best. Oh, you go to the best. I parked right here by the charger. This is an awesome setup. Huge facility here. I guess they gotta produce all of that beer that I'm buying every month. Uh, but there's actually, oh, Tesla charger and a charge point charger down there. But we can't really get over there right now, but if we ever come visit it another time, sweet. You got hatchet throwing and cornhole and everything fun. This looks like it's gonna be an awesome time. Lots of charging here. Look at all how amazing. All right, that was a ton of fun. Uh, really enjoyed it here at Athletic Brewing and show, uh, tap room isn't open yet, but uh, they said they're working on it and hopefully sometime soon. So I would definitely come back uh, for all of this. That was a blast and I'm really glad they put this on for us and now we can go drive home safely even after having a whole bunch of uh, drinks. All right, heading back out now and of course, it's Connecticut, so there's traffic. Two hours and five minutes back home. And we are going to uh, get back with 12% battery, apparently. It was cool. I hope they get the like tap room set up um, and stuff. I'd love to come back here. Definitely very folly. Uh, the weather was like just so up and down. It was one minute to be hot with the sun out. The next... Uh, 
we'd go back behind the clouds and it felt freezing and the wind would pick up. And it's 62, so it's not like, yeah, it's not, not cold. But, I mean, so I was chilly sitting there. In the, in the basketball, in the, in the basketball thing, it would flip up over on its side. Oh no. Was that before or after Arlo got there? It was good. They had a good mix of stuff for the kids there with uh, cornhole and basketball and Jenga and Connect Four. It kept them busy. The basketball kept them busy the longest. The band was good. Very funky. They, um, the band didn't like hardly took a break the whole time we were there. All right, back home to New Jersey we go. advantage of uh, stuff at athletic. I mean, this isn't the beer one and field beer drinking that anyway, but I guess technically you could. Uh, this is their hop water, which is basically a, a seltzer, flavored seltzer with um, hops infused in it. Um, let's try this one. This is the mango. I had the lemon lime before and the strawberry watermelon, which was very nice and refreshing. The lemon lime in it wasn't a fan. I liked it. Then. I liked it. Yeah, it's okay. Um, very mango -y. Um, did you try it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. hmm, 
smells more mango-y than it tastes, which is very faint mango. It's not bad, it's refreshing. Yeah, the strawberry watermelon was like the most flavorful one, but it was so summery, like you could only really see drinking it by the pool. All right, that's pretty good. Might have to add some of these day pack uh, water things to our athletic subscription now too. And make it a two hundred dollar a month thing every single time. Our whole garage is full of uh, athletic stuff now. All right, wrapping up our drive. We've got that beautiful golden fall sunlight. <laughs> Big day. A lot of fresh air. Uh, and the uh, stop and go traffic throughout all of Connecticut and the absolutely horrible drivers all the whole way have not helped anything. But we're heading back now, crossing the Tappan Z. Always be the Tappan Z to me. Um, the, yeah. Um, what are your favorite bridges do? My favorite bridges? Mm -hmm. um, we've got the Golden Gate, Verrazano, but I don't enjoy it because there's always traffic on it. Yeah. Um, we've got the Kush Kushushka, it's my favorite design because I can't really see it. Um, I like Jeff. Jeff? What's Jeff? Bridges. Anyway, uh, that's all we got. <laughs> You had that one. Had that one loaded in there. Loaded How in the long chamber. have you wanted to use that one? I don't know. Just while you're talking. Is this the dad, the dad rug? Is yeah, the dad rug's good. Yep. Alright, here's our efficiency and consumption. So, we're actually getting home with 4.6% uh, more than was expected. Uh, mostly because of driving, so I don't think that that was me. I think that was the traffic. Uh, we didn't have climate control really going much at all either, so that helped. And uh, used a little bit on other stuff. And then here's our overall consumption. So our average is 280 watt hours per mile, which is quite good um, over the last 30 miles. I'd say like anything under 300 generally is pretty good. Here we go, since last charge, we went 223 miles, used 58 kilowatt hours of the battery, which is 260 watt hours per mile, so even better on the whole trip than just the last 30 miles. So that's quite good. All right, well, always uh, an enjoyable adventure in an EV. The nice thing was, didn't have to worry at all about gas. We uh, charged up overnight and um, had more than enough to get there and back. Uh, when we left there, it was saying we are going to get home with 12% battery or 11%, and now it's saying 24, 25%. So, uh, don't know what changed about the efficiency. So, we may get closer to home what's going on with that, but. Um, it's just your traffic. It's probably it's because of the traffic. traffic. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry used less energy because of that. So anyway, we didn't need to charge to 100%, but we did. Um, and... It's a good thing that you did, otherwise it would have been like unnecessary yeah. stressor. Yeah, I mean, I love that they have those, uh, all those chargers there, but it's too long we couldn't use them today. Um, well, but, they're employees. Yeah, the two of them were labeled for employees. Um, yes. So, uh, but the nice thing is, you know, we, if we were in a gas car, we would have driven up there, used most of the tank, and either had to refill tonight when we get back home, or like tomorrow morning before commuting. But because we've got an EV, we didn't need any of that, and we'll just plug in when we get back home, and tomorrow we'll be back in full again. I think one of the, that's one of the biggest uh, kind of unsung benefits of having an EV. Sure, you save on electricity over gas uh, and maintenance and stuff over the lifetime of the, the car, but just the convenience part too. I really love not having to stop at gas stations all the time. I find it like such a pain now when we do have to do it. Oh, and now we're back into traffic again. All right. Well, with that, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed coming along with us on our family adventure. Uh, with that, see you out there on the road. <laughs>